Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I am going to try to get a Kerbal into orbit around the moon and bring that Kerbal back safely. Now, I'm going to do that on the larger Antarixa rocket with the F1 engine that we saw in the previous episode. And that means a high thrust to weight ratio higher than usual for a crude rocket. Uh, usually you want to limit that to 4 but I don't see too many options here uh, and I do like the way the rocket flew with the F1 in the previous episode so uh, you know much more stably than the H1 situation where I had to lock gimbals all over the place and use vern vernier thrusters so yes I think this will be okay we'll have to have our Kerbal deal with the fact that he can't reach for the switches in the last bit of the first stage burn but that is about the size of it. I can't make the second stage any larger, otherwise the thrust weight ratio is too low. And so that's that's sort of the limiting factor. And the increasing the size of the third stage doesn't do anything at all. It does it won't uh, help us out with the thrust weight ratio there. So you can see the third stage is extremely limited in its thrust weight ratio. Lots of delta V though, and I think this is the maximum burn time for an RL-10, at least it's the uh, longest burn time I've ever seen for an RL-10, so I assume that's the limit for that particular engine. And its job is going to be completing orbit, making the transfer to the moon, and then getting us into orbit around the moon. So it's going to have three burns, and I, uh, the RL-10 is supposed to be able to relight up to ten times, so I hope that's alright. I've added if we look in here, I don't want to remove the fairings right now. Uh, little little snub nose uh, separatrons in order to use as our fuel settling device once we get into orbit around the moon. Otherwise, we'll be using RCS to settle the fuel. I've added RCS to the J2 stage so that uh, we have additional stability there. And so in this stage, come on, uh, we've got MMH and N204, just a tiny little bit for stability. And uh, I've, uh, right now what you're not seeing here is the locked tank on the, the pod's own service module. And so this, this tank has, has MMH and N204 locked. And that provides 1,200 meters per second for the return journey. I hope that's going to be enough. Um, we'll see. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, we've got a full tank of lithium hydroxide. We've got uh, waste disposal area, of course. It is the same uh, setup as you saw me test the previous time, which leads me to the important point, which is uh, we are testing this system again, and last time it ended in dramatic failure, but that's because I didn't have the scent mode on, and maybe I was too low in the atmosphere. This time we're going to be higher in the atmosphere, and we're going to risk the possibility that the pod won't come down the first time. So if the pod ends up remaining in orbit, in a higher orbit, that's fine. We'll, we'll bring the Kerbal down on a second pass. And so our life support situation is 16 days. I've reduced the life support amount. So 16 days. And so that's enough for two trips to the moon. Uh, it's uh, eight days to the moon and back. So plenty of time. I couldn't uh, resize the waste tank any smaller than it is, so the minimum space is 25 days. So that's why that's like that. I think that covers everything. So uh, yeah, to accommodate the extra size of the RL-10 stage, we've got two of these Agena avionics packages. So that is a thing and that means more electric charge draw so at the base of the RL-10 stage we have solar panels we have four solar panels there and also some of these ST2s and that's also because the solar panels on the service module for this capsule will be shrouded in this shroud all the way to the moon so they won't be useful for that part of the journey okay well, uh, that about says it all. I'm obviously worried about the safety of our Kerbal. This is a very tenuous mission at best. Uh, okay, well anyway, let's pick our Kerbal. We will have... 
we'll have Alton do it. No, Matford sounds funnier, and I'll remember that. Matford Kerman. All right, Matford Kerman is going to be our guide to try and head to the moon for the first time and get into orbit. And perhaps do some EVAs. We'll see. Okay. Well, uh, out to launch pad, and then we have to line up with the moon. Okay, here we are, waiting for the physics to kick in, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, and there's our rocket. Quite tall. Gotta get the electric pumps underway. Electrical on. Hmm, I thought I had... Oh, I, I think I have to add the Planet Shine button. I've added Planet Shine. Somebody suggested that. I've still got ambient light adjustment just in case. Ambient light adjustment is simpler. There we go. Planet Shine. Probably we'll need it. Let's see. Uh, I think longitude of ascending when it's zero, we're in line with the moon. But let me check that theory. All right, all pumping is active, so I guess we're ready to time warp to our launch window. Matford's gonna have to stay in there for a while. It's close to zero. I, I don't know if it's gonna be constant like that. I don't know if it's always going to be close to zero degrees longitude of ascending node. If that's no, I I I don't know. Probably varies. All right, Madford. This is gonna be nerve-wracking for me. Probably more nerve-wracking nerve for me than it is for you. All right, lighting the F1 and launch. Okay, tower is clear. I don't think the clock started at the right time. Okay, three kilometers. Going fairly well here. Madford's actually looking quite tense. If he manages this, he's going to get some serious experience out of it. Antarixa rocket on its way up. 12 kilometers. This is probably max Q around here. So I try to keep the stage times for each stage similar to their real life counterparts. The F1 really burned for about 2 minutes and 45 seconds. The J2, the second stage J2s on the Saturn V burned for 6 minutes. The third stage burned for 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, well. This is the heating part. We've had tragedy around here before. Basically, this rocket is sort of one-fifth of a Saturn V. It's not really a Saturn I, but uh, sort, of, sort of that kind of feel to it. Five seconds till first stage burnout. First stage out. Set. and J2 ignition. We've got a lot more Delta V left over than I thought we would. Looking, looking good here. Now we've got that roll. That's the reason why I added the RCS. So let me have the RCS try and stop that. It's only on this side though. The RCS tanks up here are locked right now. Um, let's get the CO2 scrubbing started right now. No reason not to. 
Don't want to see that CO2 tank reach its limit or anything. Got a long trip up, six minutes. Again, the aim is for the second stage to end up re-entering, though we seem to have enough for orbit right now, well, barely. I think we'll end up short. Getting a little bit higher on the apoapsis than I really need at this point. But then again, I need to keep the time to apoapsis sort of stable. At least give me enough time for this burn. Well, I can confirm now that the second stage will re-enter as planned. We will need the third stage to get into orbit. Well, there's no more roll and, and it looks like we still have plenty of that RCS fuel. Okay, getting up to serious g-forces here. Past 1.6. Mafford still looking okay. We are again high on the apoapsis. I guess we'll end up 300 kilometers or so. Oh, that those, that RCS tank is still on. I shouldn't have had that on. The one with the RL10. No, it's off. Oh, it's using this RCS, even though it's not supposed to. Ah. Well, that's all right, I guess. Well, we're past two G's now, and the launch is looking okay. We've got one minute left in burn time, one minute left to apoapsis, and we are flattening out. Of course, we still need some remaining time to apoapsis in order to burn the RL-10. Well, we're definitely looking okay so far. But, you know, the part of this that's got me worried, it's the end. That's the annoying part of all this. The rest of it probably work out fine. It's just the part at the end that's worrisome. Okay. We'll let that run out, actually. Probably a good policy. We've got too much time left to apoapsis right now, I think. Okay, that's out. Can I unlock. And set. And ignition. So there's the new bottom end of this stage. It's got to take some time for it to work up the rest of the way to orbit, but not too much time. I should probably angle down a little bit. Just on battery life, this shows six days, but don't believe that because that doesn't include TAC life support. TAC life support on its own says 12 days, but that's just the life support component without the rest of it. So, yeah. Somewhere less than six days. Probably more like four days just on battery life. I'll keep it going until our apoapsis hits 300 or... Yeah, that's probably it. No, this is all right. I'll take it back. RCS is off. Solar panels out. So, now we're good on the solar power. And of course, we've got the downward facing panels. If we, for some reason, and maybe for tag life support reasons, need more power, we can flip around and they'll give supplementary power. And uh, hopefully, that'll be enough. But, electric charge. Mostly stable, looks like. Maybe a slight draw. Let me plot for the moon now. Okay, I'm not gonna put our Kerbal on an initial free return trajectory. It'll be very close to a free return trajectory, but I want the close moon periapsis here. And so this can be easily adjusted with a very minor burn into a, into a return. but And it's going the right way around the moon. It's... Uh, this way around, so clockwise. But uh, yeah, we don't have a uh, Kerbin periapsis for it. But it gives us a nice moon periapsis, so that's what I'm going to go for. We certainly have enough delta V to do this burn and get into orbit around the moon with this stage. Uh, as usual, I've put some margin on. 
But uh, yep, so this is what we're going to go for. Let me have Smart ASS turn itself slowly towards the node using the RCS. Obviously, we have no reaction wheel control. Oh, I should turn on the RCS for it to do that. Yeah, reaction wheel control is not a thing. Um, maybe I should have done this turn just to save on the fuel. I think it'll be alright though. We will be using the RCS to settle the fuel down before lightning RL10. The the SRBs, the little tiny separation boosters, are for the moon side relighting. We might need to do this in two burns though. I mean the RL10 just doesn't have much acceleration to it. You can see max acceleration 2.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so I'm going to use the thrust of power in forward mode, pressing H to settle down the fuel. And I figure that should be sufficient, so here we go. It's not a bad looking craft so far. Matford is delighted. Alright, I'll be back with you at the end of this first burn. Okay, coming up on the conclusion of the first burn here. Our RCS tank still seems to have a decent amount of fuel in, but we'll need to try and conserve that, so I'm not going to have Smart ASS making further maneuvers with it. Okay, I think that's sufficient for the first burn. So engine shutdown, and we will replot. Probably the orientation will stay the same, we don't need to turn it the next time, we'll just need to settle the fuel down. Okay, replot accomplished, 68 kilometers this time on the moon periapsis, same sort of situation. And so, yep, as expected, the maneuver node is pretty close to our current orientation, and we just need to time warp through 2 hours and 41 minutes for the next burn. Okay, forward. Okay, pressing H with all our might. Let's see how the fuel is. Okay. I think that would have been enough. So, still simulating all the engine igniter stuff, even though I don't have engine igniter in. And again, I know the RL-10 can do up to 10 relights, so I'm going to assume that. And so there's the second relight, uh, third relight of it, sorry. Third light of it, I should say. Well, we're uh, coming up on it here, and it looks like I really overdid it on this RL-10 stage. Uh, we have lots and lots of fuel. Not complaining, of course. Always a good thing. And uh, RCS fuel, a little bit less, uh, but uh, we should be alright. Engine is, of course, on or off. That doesn't change. It's uh, not an uh, engine igniter thing. I'll just follow the maneuver node. Okay, well, alright, that should be close. Let's see. 872. Well, let me try and use some. Yep, uh, RCS will take care of this. 55 kilometers, I guess. 56 kilometers sounds fine. Okay. Turned off RCS, but actually, I want to orient so that our tail is facing the sun. And now I know about Smart ASS and all, but uh, as I've already established, Smart ASS does use a lot of RCS fuel. So I'm going to take SAS off, get RCS on, and do a quick little burn here. And I'm just going to let it drift. That way, not using too much of this RCS, which we'll still need to orient, orient ourselves when we try to get into lunar orbit 
and we might also need to start off our transit to back to Earth because we'll probably still have fuel in this stage. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'll tell SAS to hold it there. I don't think we've uh, had a, no, we've had a no, I don't think we've had a Kerbal step outside high over the Earth. Hmm. Matt Furt, are you up for a quick EVA? Let's see, let's do a crew report first. Ooh, what, what happens to control if I do this? Hmm. Because then there's not going to be any control in this pod, is there? And, well, we're not, we're not too heavy for the two Aginas. Oh, this could be bad. Okay, but anyway, uh, crew report. It's very round. Keep data. Uh, Alright, EVA for me. Oh, don't... Don't do anything crazy. Insufficient avionics. A EVA report. Keep data. Uh, take data. Okay, board. Hopefully we still have control. By the way, our tail is still facing the sun, so that's the proper orientation. Unlocking controls. Okay, so it unlocked controls now. Okay, so that part works. Uh, with the little cores, the pr little probe cores that had control, that that wasn't very good. But it looks like we're okay now. All right. Uh, so Mafford did his thing. Uh, EV report and a crew report. We can proceed. Maybe he should have carried some more science with us, but hey. We have enough to think about at this point. We're filling up with waste a bit quicker than I thought we would. I thought we had 25 days worth of waste capacity. Seems that was false advertising. But carbon dioxide is still low and electric charge is nice and high. Here we go for Lunar Sphere of Influence. Okay, let's see how much it's going to take to get into orbit around the moon. Ooh, our uh, periapsis is a little bit low, actually. Hmm. It's a... Uh, yeah, a little bit of RCS can raise that for us. Doesn't take much to get a loose orbit around the moon. But I'm clearly aiming for a tight orbit around the moon. Okay. That should be good enough. So definitely have enough fuel for this. Gonna bring down the the little thrusters to sell us down these. Okay, they're right there if you can see. But we are high over the moon now, and Mapford can do something about that. Let's take a crew report. Oh, maybe he can't. Hmm. Have we done this before? I think we might have done high over the moon, have we? Let's see. EVA. No, we haven't done this. Okay, keep data board. Okay, well we've we've got that at least. Alright, now let me orient to the maneuver node without using smart ASS. Okay, fuel is still okay. I mean RCS. It's RCS that's actually tight right now. It's got a uh, serious inclination around the moon. It's about 43, 42, 43 degrees. Backwards, of course. Hope that doesn't complicate the trip home. It will give us a good look at things and allow Matt for to do some good science. Okay, well, we're no longer in communication with Earth, I'm sure. Loss of signal. So, Mission Control back home is just going to have to wait to find out how Mattford's burn does here. I've estimated, uh, of course, on only the service module tank was really supposed to bring the capsule back home. 
and for that I estimate 1,200 meters per second uh, delta V to return to Earth. So uh, we'll see whether that's really true. It looks like we have some margin on here, so we'll be starting it out with this fuel well, and that fuel. Okay, here we go. Uh, all edge rockets. And burn. So if I'm counting right, this is the fourth burn for the RL-10. Getting a lot more work out of it than I think they normally do on launches. Okay, looking very good. We're approaching periapsis right now. Good timing. And I'll shut it there. So 69 by 46, let's call it, well, 70 by 46 if you round it. And we are in a nice tight orbit around the moon. Okay, Matford, I think we have work to do here. Crew report. At least we can do this one. Above Midlands. Oh, so each biome is, uh, it's biome dependent. Okay, so keep that in mind, Matford. Uh, scooch down and EVA report. That's, oh, this is in space near the moon. This isn't biome dependent. Huh. Oh, I forgot to, well, um, why don't you grab this stuff from inside, Matford? You still got the EVA over each biome, I think. Actually, I don't think, well, I mean, uh, we didn't actually have lots of signal, did we? We have two satellites in orbit around the moon. They were in communication the whole time. Well, now he's in direct communication. I don't know if this is another biome or not. Let's let's go over here and see if it's a different biome. I suspect there are fewer biomes around here than I would like, but... Yeah, looks like we're over this crater. Okay, this is new. Uh, above the moon's major craters. Okay, so it's just one biome that covers all the major craters, I guess. All the all the major craters. All of the moon's major craters. Okay. How about minor craters? Uh I don't know, maybe around here these are minor craters. That's a major crater. There's a minor crater maybe. Let's see. But uh, I guess there'll be seas, right? Uh we'll have one over here. This is definitely a mare of some sort. So we'll try one here and one over there. Should have brought a thermometer. Okay, how about around here? Uh, this will be a duplicate. Okay, board. And uh, crew report. Lunar seas. Oh, there's already lunar seas. Huh. This didn't look like a sea of any kind. Usually it's like over here. These these are the seas, right? Well, I don't have much hope of uh, getting a different biome over there, but let's see. Okay, Matford scouting out the possible landing spots for a lunar landing, obviously. Okay. Crew report. Lunar seas. Well, I don't know what that'll do for us. I don't think it does anything. Okay. Well, Matt Furt is successfully in orbit around the moon, but I'm getting a little bit tired after putting this mission together and getting it over here. So I'm I'm hesitant to try and bring him back right now just in case I make a mistake like not having the thing in descent mode. So I'm going to wait until the next episode to bring Matt Furt back. So yeah, that'll be the thing to do in the next episode, first thing, and we'll work from there. Just so that I don't make any mistakes, and then maybe we can make sure Matt Furt lives through this experience. Okay, so forgive me for that, but uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.